So if you've just picked up the Samsung Galaxy S24 FE and you want to set it up the right way and customize it in a way that makes it easier to use for you and at the same time unlock your phone's full potential and learn how to utilize the Galaxy's next level AI capabilities, well, you're in the right place. And I've been using Samsung Galaxy devices since the Galaxy S3. So I do know a thing or two about them. So if you're ready, I'm about to show you how to truly master your new Galaxy. So this phone is box fresh, and this is pretty much how it will look when you first take it out of the box. And one of the first things you should definitely do is get your biometrics sorted out properly on day one, do it once, do it right, and then you don't have to do it again. So there is a couple of ways to jump into your settings. You can swipe down and go to settings here, or if you swipe up, you can find the settings here as well. For this video, I'm just gonna add this to the home screen because we are gonna be using this several times throughout this video. So the first thing to do is this, jump into your settings, scroll down until you see the security and privacy section. And on this page, you wanna scroll down to where it says biometrics. Now, when you set this up the first time, there's a good chance you probably only did one fingerprint. So what I highly recommend you do here is not just register one fingerprint, but actually register the first finger and your thumb on your dominant hand, and then also your thumb on your less dominant hand and to do this you just go to add fingerprint here and then scan in the digit by tapping on and off the sensor and make sure you change the angle of your finger from time to time so you get all of the edges and the tip of your finger as well once you've done that you'll see add another just hit add here and then you can add your thumb on your other hand so now that you've done that no matter which way you pick up your phone you will be able to unlock it in an instant now to expand on that and make the unlocking of your device even quicker this is an optional one you could set up face unlock so if you jump back into your settings go back to security and privacy back to biometrics and then here set up your face recognition then good lighting it is faster and sometimes way more convenient just hit continue here and then scan your face now if you're the type of person who wears a mask when you're out and about, or if you wear tons and tons of makeup, you may want to add an alternative appearance to enhance the recognition process. That's entirely up to you. And if you're worried about someone picking up your phone while you're sleeping and then holding it in front of your face to unlock it, I do recommend you check that the require open eyes is switched on. Now, if you sleep with your eyes open, well, in that case, you're out of luck. <laughs> Okay, number three is probably number one for a lot of people, but less important, that's why it's number three. It is how to change the wallpaper on the device. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can hold your finger down on the home screen and you'll get some options down here, including the wallpaper and style. But just to show you the other way to do that as well, go into your settings, scroll down to where you see wallpaper and style, and here you'll have the same options. Now, something really cool I wanna show you on the Galaxy phone is this. If you go to change wallpapers and you scroll down, there is a dedicated AI section here where you can create a wallpaper from scratch using this word prompt and the templates that exist here. So for example, if you like the look of this kind of night scene or this crystal mineral scene, you can choose those as your starting points. I'm gonna go with the crystal scene and the words that are highlighted here can be modified to generate a truly unique image to your phone. So if we go, instead of crystalline, let's go with amethyst and instead of neutral, let's go with neon and hit generate. You get a few different images to choose from. So you can pick your favorite one. And if you want to, you can just modify again and create something completely new. I'm gonna go with this one and just hit set. And then you'll see we have the option to set both the lock screen and the home screen at the same time. So I'm just gonna do that for the sake of this video and hit done. There we go, a truly unique wallpaper. Now, before we move on to tip four, I do wanna show you one more thing you can do here, which is incredibly useful when it comes to wallpapers. I honestly love this about the Samsung phones and I haven't seen any other manufacturers doing this. So if you go back into the wallpapers, go back to change wallpapers and scroll down to where you see photo ambient, this will add weather effects on top of your wallpaper to reflect what the weather conditions are outside. Sometimes I pick up my phone and I don't even know it's raining outside and I see my wallpaper is raining and straight away I know I ain't going to the shop and I might as well get the Uber Eats on the go. So if you go to try now, you can select the wallpaper that you want to add this effect to. And just for demonstration purposes, if you hit play here, you can get an idea of how this will look. There we go, we've got water running down the screen, we've got a bit of snow, and you'll even see sun rays beaming down from the top of the display 
on a sunny day. And just so you know, this effect will only affect the lock screen wallpaper and not your home screen wallpaper. All right, even though this isn't quite as big as the Ultra, it's still a big phone. And one of the things that I do recommend you do is customize the grid size so you can have the maximum amount of apps per page, which ultimately will mean you're scrolling around less often. To do this, just hold on an empty space on the screen, go to settings here. And right here, you will see the grid size options. So by default, it's on four by six and the app screen the same, and also the folder grid is three by four. You can change all of these if you want to, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna to go to the home screen grid first, change it to five by six. That way we have the maximum space on the home screen and hit done. And straight away you'll see you'll have an extra gap here and you'll also have the option to add an extra app down here in the kind of task bar. So now I can just bring the uh, settings down here to the bottom right corner nice and conveniently. Now something I always do on day one and this is completely optional for you, I like to have a very visible clock on the home screen. You do have the time up here but it's quite small and this is the one that I like to use. So if you go into the Play Store, search for Google Clock, and you should find this, the official Google Clock app. There is an official Samsung Clock app on the phone already, but the widget for it isn't quite as nice as the Google one, in my opinion. And by default, you'll probably have this weather widget right in the middle of your home screen. If you wanna get rid of that, just hold your finger down on it and you can go to remove. Now hold your finger down on an empty space again. And this time at the bottom here, we're gonna go to widgets. You will see some recommended ones at the top, but if you scroll down to the Google clock widgets, there's quite a few to choose from, but I particularly like the analog clock and the scallop style. And there we go, we've got a nice clock and it's also got the date on it as well, so that's convenient. And because you've done this, this actually unlocks a hidden feature on the phone, which I'm gonna come back to a little bit later on. Anyway, let's move on to tip number six. So what you just saw in the previous tip was how to add a widget, but you can actually expand on the widgets on the home screen. And Samsung's implementation of this is one of the best out there, if not the best in my opinion. So right here we have the Google search bar, which is convenient to have, but you can make better use of this space with this trick. So if you hold your finger down on the Google search bar, you'll see the option to create a stack. Just tap that. Straight away you'll be presented with other widgets that can be stacked behind the Google search bar. So some of the ones that I think are particularly useful are the device care ones. So if you go to this, you'll see there's the storage and optimization widget. So if we tap on that, that adds it behind the Google search bar and you can swipe between those whenever needed. And one of the cool things about the Samsung widgets is if you hold your finger down on them, you can actually jump into the settings of those widgets and make them transparent so that they will appear like this. And now that you've created that stack, if you wanna add even more stuff behind it, all you need to do is hold your finger down on it again, go to edit stack, scroll all the way to the end and you'll see the plus. And then once again, you'll see a bunch of options available to you that can be stacked here. And do keep in mind the options will vary depending on the shape of the stack because this one is in a row. There are limitations to that. And this one here is in a square. So the actual options here will be different. Okay, let's move on to tip number seven. And all the stuff I've shown you so far is the very fundamental things, but there is something very, very important that I think a lot of people won't do and will probably just hope happens automatically which it will, but it won't do it straight away. So if you wanna get your phone up to speed and at its best straight out of the box, then you need to do this. Go into your settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, and here you'll see software update. And at the top, you'll see download and install. If there is an available update, do that straight away. And there's three parts to this, so that was part one. The next thing to do is this. Go into the Google Play Store. This is your replacement for the App Store if you're coming over from iOS and in the top right corner, you'll see your profile icon, tap on that. And here you'll see manage apps and device, tap on that. Now straight away, you can see that I've got 20 pending updates and these won't happen automatically, but you can force them to download straight away. And I do recommend you do because look how important some of these are. So make sure you tap update all here at the top and that will then force these apps to download immediately. Okay, part three of this is very important and I do believe a lot of people will never do this themselves, but you're watching this video, so now you're not gonna be one of those people. Because this is a Samsung phone, it does have some first party Samsung apps on board, which don't always exist in the Google Play Store. And these apps actually improve the user experience on the Samsung Galaxy devices. So just like the Google Play Store, this time we're gonna go into the Samsung Galaxy Store, which appears 
like this. And in the bottom right corner, you'll probably see this red dot here next to the menu. Just tap on that and you can see at the top here, there are 39 <laughs> updates which haven't downloaded automatically. This phone has been on all day and it hasn't done it on its own. And as you can see, some of these are very, very important to the device. So make sure you update all of these on day one as well. Now, the reason this is so important is because if you don't do this, some of the clever AI stuff that the phone can do will not work properly on day one. And we will get into all that fun AI stuff if you stick around. Anyway, now let's move on to the customization section of this video. So you'll notice when you set up the phone the first time, you will have the classic Samsung Galaxy style menu option, home button and back button. But if you are coming from iOS or another Android phone and you're used to the gestures where you kind of swipe up and swipe across to navigate, you may want to switch this up. And it is something I always do on day one. So I'll show you guys how to do it. It's up to you if you want to use it or not. So jump into your settings. You would think this would be somewhere in the gestures and controls, but actually it's within the display options here. And if you scroll down, you will see the navigation bar options. Just tap on that. And on this page, here is where you can switch the button controls to the swipe gestures, which I personally prefer, and it does clear up space here at the bottom of the display. Okay, so one of the important things to customize on day one is the lock screen and the information on the lock screen and the shortcuts. So to do this, just hold your finger down on an empty space, go to wallpaper and style, and then here on the left side is your lock screen. So if you just tap on that, you will see faint lines around the areas that can be customized by you. For example, if I tap the clock here, you'll see you get a bunch of different options when it comes to the fonts. And if you grab one of the dots here, you can actually resize the clock as well. And at the bottom, if you want to, you can customize the color of the clock. I do recommend you choose a color that stands out against the background. You don't want to struggle to read the time and you can go into the swatches here and actually choose a custom color or use the spectrum to change the color. And also these sliders here will adjust saturation and transparency as well if you want. I'm just going to keep it white for now. And then you will see there's a bunch of different styles as well. You can even have an entire calendar here on your home screen if you want. The next thing you want to customize here is the widget. So just underneath the clock, you will see in faint writing, the word widgets, if you hit the plus there, you can add some useful tools. For example, if you're using the Galaxy Ring and the Galaxy Watch, you might wanna add the battery life widget here, which lets you know the battery on your other Samsung devices. And something very, very important to do, just in case one day you lose your phone and someone does find it. At the bottom here, the field that says, contact information. If you hit plus there, you can leave a message on the screen. So this can be a backup email address or a backup phone number that someone can contact you on if they find your phone. So make sure you put some contact details here just in case. And the last bit of customization here are the two shortcuts. So by default, the left one is phone, the right one is camera. It's entirely up to you if you wanna change these. For example, if you want to have the torch here or the flashlight, whatever you wanna call it, you can do that. And you can actually set it to any app on the device. So you could change it to your Samsung wallet or your Google wallet if you prefer, or even the voice recorder, because this voice recorder has a really special secret weapon, which I'm gonna show you guys if you stick around. Okay, so you got your lock screen locked down properly. Now let's move on to some more customization of the controls this time. So jump into your settings, and this time we're gonna find the advanced features section here. And within this menu, you will see the side button. So if you tap on that, this is the power key on the side of the device. By default, it closes the screen. And if you hold it down, it does open Bixby. Now, if you're not into the Samsung ecosystem with all of the smart home stuff and TVs and all that kind of thing, then you might find you don't really need to use Bixby that often. So I am in that group of people. So I do prefer to remap what the power button does. So first of all, the push and hold on the power button for me, it just makes sense that it's actually a power menu. So if I hold my finger down, I can actually switch the phone off. But not only that, if you're involved in an accident and someone finds the phone and they try to power it down, they can actually look at your medical information. So if you're allergic to penicillin or something, they will be able to know. And also, if the phone is locked, you can still make emergency SOS calls from here. Now, part two of this customization is the double press on the side key. This is one of the most valuable tips in this video, in my opinion, because it's something I literally use every day. If you switch this to open app, and instead of opening the camera, switch it to the Google Wallet or the Samsung Wallet if that's what you're using. Now, next time you're at a cash register and you wanna pay very quickly, you just double tap the power key, 
opens up your wallet with all your cards preloaded there. You can scan your loyalty cards and pay with your bank card in an instant. This for me is definitely the best use case for the double tap on the Psyche. Okay, so here's how to add a bit more flavor to your UI. So by default, you'll see everything's kind of gray and white and it's just kind of boring. And you'll also notice that's reflected on this particular widget and it will also reflect on other widgets. You can change this up. So here's how you do that. Hold your finger down on the empty part of the screen, go to wallpaper and style. And then here you'll see the color palette options. So if you enable this, what it will then do is try and match the system UI to the wallpaper that you're using. Because the wallpaper I'm using is kind of purple and pink, it thinks that I would like the UI to be those colors. So you get a few different options. This blue one looks pretty cool. This one looks good blue and turquoise and green. Once you hit apply, it takes a few seconds and you'll notice now all of my UI is themed those colors. Now you can actually go one step even further with this if you really like the color scheme that you set up. Go back to the color palette and beneath it you'll see apply palette to app icons. Tap that and hit apply. And now pretty much all of the standard apps on the phone will use the color palette scheme that you chose. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of this wallpaper and the color schemes I've got going on right now. So I'm gonna switch it to one of my wallpapers from my collection. And I'm gonna add a few apps on the home screen. So let's just do that real quick. Okay, so that's a little bit better now. I've organized the apps a little bit and added a few more widgets here and there. And here's a little bonus tip for you guys. When it comes to customizing your home screens, when you swipe up from the bottom, you'll have all of your apps here, but you'll notice they're in no particular order. They're just kind of all over the place. And the phone tries to predict what apps you might want to use next. But when it comes to actually finding the apps, it's much easier to do if you do this. Hit the three dots in the top right corner and go to sort at the top and change it to alphabetical order. Now, next time when you swipe up for your app drawer, everything will be where it's supposed to be and you can find it much more quickly. And here is one more customization tweak that I recommend you do. You don't have to. I'll explain why I think it's important and why you might want to use it. But first, let me show you how to do it. So if you go into your settings, scroll down to display, and at the top of this page, you'll see the option to switch on dark mode, or you can go into dark mode settings and schedule it. For me personally, I like to have dark mode on all the time. It makes things more visible in my opinion. And the great thing about dark mode is if you do decide to use it permanently or scheduled, when there are dark parts of the screen, for example, within the settings menu, these areas are not using any power because they're switched off entirely. So if you do have light mode on, all of this will be lit up white and consuming battery power. So that's one of the benefits to the dark mode. And the other one is it just looks cooler and maybe makes text on the phone a little easier to read. And it also affects some of the widgets, as you can see the Google clock that we set up earlier on is now in dark mode. And I do think it looks better like that. And I'm gonna show you that secret feature which this has unlocked in a couple of steps. So let's do this next one quickly. So one of the cool features that exists on most Samsung Galaxy phones is the edge panel. This is the faint line at the side here. When you swipe that out, you get a bunch of tools. Now you'll notice a lot of these I already have on the main home screen. So there's no point of them being here as well. What I do recommend you use this for is the AI tools that the phone has and also less used apps that you think will be useful from time to time, but don't really need to be on the home screen. Now to customize this, just hit the pen in the bottom right corner here. Then you'll see the little minus sign next to the apps that exist here, remove them all. So now that you've deleted all of the default apps that were here on the edge panel, if you just hit the plus there, you can choose apps to add. For example, apps like the Notes app from Samsung. This is incredibly useful. The Voice Recorder, again, a very powerful tool and you'll see why. The Samsung Files is also very useful when you download images and things from the internet. And this one, Find, that's very useful too. Now, I'm gonna leave one space because I do wanna show you one of the superpowers that Galaxy devices have and maybe in five to 10 years, the iPhone will get this feature. But check this out. Let's say you wanna watch a video or listen to a podcast podcast on YouTube and have it playing in the background whilst you're doing something else. You can do this on the Galaxy even if you don't have YouTube Premium. And the way in which you do this is by creating an app pair. So here's how you do that. You can swipe up from the bottom, tap on the icon, and you'll see the option to open in split screen view. So this is one way you can do it. And at the bottom here, you can choose the other app that you want to split. Another way to do this is to swipe out the edge panel and drag an app on top of the existing app and now you have 
a split screen setup. Now that you've set up an app pair that you like, if you want to, you can hit the three dots in the center, hit the star here, and then add it to the edge panel. So now when we swipe out the edge panel, we have that saved app pair. And you do get the option to add it to the home screen as well if you prefer. Now before we move on from edge panels, there is one more thing I want to show you which is very useful. If you swipe it out at the bottom left corner here, very briefly you get the settings. I'm going to show you that again because it's easy to miss. When you swipe out the edge panel, bottom here you'll see settings and this opens up the library of edge panels that can be added behind the first one that it defaults to. So in my opinion, one of the most useful ones is the clipboard. The great thing about the Samsung keyboard is it doesn't just keep the last bit of text you copied, it will keep a history of text that's been copied to the clipboard. So if you've pasted an email address and then you've got a one-time passcode and then you wanted to paste that email address somewhere, but now you think you don't have it because it's pasting the one-time passcode, <laughs> That sounds super complicated, but this will keep at least five or six or even more of the last copied text there for recall at any time. Also, the compass is a pretty cool one as well. So I'm going to add that. So now when we swipe out the edge panel and swipe again, we've got the compass tool and we've also got the clipboard tool as well. So definitely play around with the edge panels, set up the tools that would be most useful for you. And we're going to come back to these ones here that are permanently here at the top. These two are very, very useful and you'll see why. Okay, here's something else that I think you should do on day one. When you swipe down from the top and swipe down again, you have your quick settings here. You can customize these and you do have multiple pages. Now to do this, just hit the pen icon at the top of the screen. You can edit the first row, which pops up when you swipe down once, but I like it how it is by default. It's this one here, the full page that you might want to edit. Now, if you swipe across, you've got a bunch of blank spaces and at the bottom here, you have a bunch of tools that can be added. Here are a couple of tools that I recommend you add. Dolby Atmos being a very important one because when you toggle this on and off, it can improve the quality of the speakers on the device. I'll leave that down to you to test to see if you prefer it or not. Another very powerful and important tool to add here is the secure Wi-Fi. And you'll see why I say that's important when we get to the security and privacy part of this video. And if you have confidential files on your device, the secure folder could be a good one to add here as well. And you can move these around and change the order if you want to. So to access this now, all you do is swipe down once, swipe down twice, and then you have your full quick setting controls. But if that seems like a lot of work, you can actually make this even easier if you go into the settings again by hitting the pen at the top. And on this page, you will see quick settings, instant access. So if you go to this and enable it, this enables the top right corner of the display. So if you swipe down here, it immediately brings down the full settings so you don't have to swipe twice. So swipe down top right corner and you get full controls. And if you swipe down anywhere on the top, you get the classic swipe once, swipe twice option. This, in my opinion, is a setting you should definitely turn on on day one. Now, remember the clock and how I said it unlocks a secret feature on the device? Well, I'm about to show you that. Go into your settings, scroll down, go to display, scroll down again, right to the bottom, and you will see screensaver. Go to this, and in this menu, you will now see the Google clock. And with this enabled, when your phone is charging at night or on your bedside table, it will display a clock which is very dark, but readable even at night. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're wondering what time it is, it will be visible, although it won't blind you and it will move around on the display. So it's not gonna damage the display or anything like that if it's in one spot permanently. There are of course other options here like the colors, the photo frame, photo table and Google Photos. So if you wanna show photos while your phone is just resting on a desk, that can also be an option as well. All right, this next one is very useful. So if you jump into your settings again, Again, scroll down to the notifications section and here go to notification pop-up style and here you will see the option color by keyword. This is incredibly useful and it does work best with people's names. So people in your phone book, for example, I'm going to put my own name here, add the keyword, hit the plus, and then you can choose a color for messages that come through from that specific person. So I'm going to set it to green, for example, hit done. Now, whenever a text message comes through from 
person with that name, it will show a notification in that color. So you could set up an individual color for each person in your family. And when you get a notification, you'll be able to instantly identify who is from just based on the color. And if we go back one step, there is a way to amplify this effect even more. So this is tip number 18. Within the same options menu, the notification pop-up style, right here in the middle, you will see edge lighting style. And here you can get really creative with how your notifications appear. There are a bunch of different styles to choose from. Some of them light up all around the edge of the display. I'm a fan of the spotlight effect where it just kind of flashes at the top of the screen here and you can actually change the color. If you leave it on auto, it will use the color by keyword. So I do recommend you leave it on auto, but if you want to set a permanent color for all messages, you can choose a color here and you can also adjust the transparency and duration of the animation. There's some really cool effects here some of them a bit more dramatic than others. So play around with it, see which one you like, customize the colors and make it unique and tailored for your personal style. Now, before we move on to security and privacy, I do wanna share with you guys one of the apps that I use for customizing notification sounds and it is called Zedge. This has sounds from pretty much all the movies you can think of, all of the games you can think of. However, one disclaimer about this app is this full of adverts. So you kind of have to work around those and try and avoid opting into things. And there is a subscription plan for this, but you don't need to subscribe in order to use it. Just hit the cross in the top corner here, go to the sound section, go to notification sounds and just type in what you're looking for. I actually really like the sound effects from the Zelda Breath of the Wild game. <laughs> because in that game, he's got this kind of tablet thing which alerts him to stuff and it just works well as notification sounds. <laughs> and yeah, you're gonna have to work around the video adverts in this. <laughs> this is how they're able to give away all this stuff for free. Once you've found a sound that you like, you can just hit download and actually you can set it to your notification sound straight away here from the Zedge app. Anyway, that was just a little bonus tip. Now let's move on to the very important security features and privacy features on the device. So this time jump into the settings and we're gonna scroll down to security and privacy. As soon as you enter this page, you will see that it does a bunch of scanning on the device. And if you see any suggestions here, you definitely wanna take a look. And one of the things that's switched off by default is the app security. So if you tap on that, go to app security here and switch it on. This just adds an extra layer on top of the Google Play Store's scanning of apps. And this will be especially useful if you're downloading APKs outside of the Google Play Store. So make sure this is switched on. And if you want to, you can scan the device to see if any dodgy apps are already installed, which they really shouldn't be if it's a brand new phone. Okay, remember when we were doing the quick settings here at the top and I said to add the secure Wi-Fi? Well, here's why. If you enable this, essentially is a free VPN on Samsung devices. It does have some limitations though that you need to be aware of, but it's very, very useful for when connecting to public hotspots. So if you just set this up for the first time, so you get one gig for free per month with this service. You can pay and have more if you want to, or you could of course get a third party VPN, but you might as well make the use of this one if you don't have a VPN already. Right now it's connected and protected and we can stop it at any time. And if you're really worried about your data being stolen when on unknown Wi-Fi networks, you can enable the auto protect here at the bottom and you do need to set it to allow all the time. And if you're interested in how much it costs to use the premium services, just tap on protection plan here and go to upgrade. And here is how much they would charge per month for unlimited usage. And then there's also a 24 hour option as well. So if you are out of the country and you're connected to a hotel Wi-Fi or something like that, you can just pay 89 pence for the day. So definitely be aware of that tool and use it when necessary. You don't want to end up getting hacked. Hacker. Hacker. Hacker, ya jama'a. Lo antabatu al-harakatu, hacker. Okay, this next one's a safety and emergency tip that you'll be glad you did if one day something bad should happen. So check this out, go into your settings, scroll down to safety and emergency. And here you can fill out your emergency info. And here you can also add emergency contacts. So you can set up your local emergency service or private guard service or family members who live nearby, for example, and will come into play if there happens to be an emergency SOS situation. So this is what I really wanna show you, the emergency SOS. 
if you go into this, if you tap the side key five times when you're in an emergency situation, it will automatically call the emergency services. But if you tick this box here at the bottom, you can send an SOS message to your emergency contacts and this will send your location and a default message that will let them know that you are in trouble. So this is something that hopefully you will never have to use, but like I said before, you'll be glad you set it up. Okay, so this next privacy security tip is to do with the passwords on your device. By default, Samsung phones use their own autofill service. However, if you're coming from a Google phone or if you use Chrome a lot on your PC, for example, you may prefer to switch this to Google pass keys and passwords. Here's how you do that. So if you jump into your settings menu, go to general management, and here you will see passwords, pass keys, and autofill. And you'll have the Samsung pass, which the phone uses by default, and then you'll have the Google services as well. So if you tap on the Google services here, you can enable Google as the preferred autofill service. So all of the passwords that you have linked to your Google account will autofill when you're browsing the internet and using apps on your device. Now, this next one is very, very important. And that's why I mentioned you should add it to the Edge panel right here, the Find app. So if you have other Samsung devices like the Buds, the Watch, the Ring, and maybe a tablet and things like that, you will definitely want to set this up. So Samsung Find will allow you to keep tabs on the locations of all your devices and even if they're switched off. So definitely spend a bit of time setting up the Samsung Find app. It could be a lifesaver if you lose your phone or any of your devices. Now it's one thing to lose your phone. The worst case scenario though is someone actually just grabs your phone off you and starts running down the street with it. And this is a brand new tool on the Samsung Galaxy devices, which I haven't seen before until I got this phone. I'm sure the other Galaxy S24s have this as well now. So if you jump into your settings, scroll down to security and privacy. There's a new option here for theft protection. So this is a tool which is designed specifically for if someone grabs your phone out of your hand while you're walking down the street and tries to run away with it. It's called theft detection lock. So with this enabled, it will detect if the phone has been snatched and is moving very quickly away from you. If that happens, the phone will auto lock. And if you want to, you can switch it to offline device lock as well. There's also the remote lock feature here and the find and erase your device feature. So these are just safety measures in case you live in a bad neighborhood and this kind of thing happens regularly. And it does seem to be something that happens a lot in London these days. I'm seeing loads of videos online of people just riding past on bikes and snatching phones out of people's hands. Okay, so that's enough doom and gloom. Let's move on to some of the fun things you can do. And my favorite things to play with on Samsung Galaxy phones these days, it is of course, Galaxy AI. So one of the first things you wanna look at when it comes to AI is this, and you have to put a bit of thought into this. So if you scroll down, there is the Galaxy AI section here. If you're a private kind of person and you're worried about AI taking over the world, then you might not be comfortable with sharing data online quite so much. If that is you, you might wanna to scroll to the bottom of this page and enable process data only on device. This will limit how much of the AI stuff I'm about to show you you can do on the device, but you'll still be able to do some of it. But I suggest you keep watching to see what the AI can actually do first before you switch this off, because some of this stuff is so good it might actually make you change your mind if you're leaning towards pushing this button here. So one of the coolest ways to use AI and something I find myself doing more and more these days is actually using it as a voice assistant. So if you swipe up diagonally from the bottom right corner like this, You'll see straight away, it defaults to Google Assistant, but you can switch it to Gemini. Just tap on that, hit more, go to continue, more, use Gemini. Now your assistant will be a combination of the classic Google Assistant and Gemini. So if you swipe in from the bottom right corner, you'll see now it looks a bit different. So with this tool now, it's way more intelligent than it's ever been before. You can harness the power of AI to brainstorm ideas and even just have a conversation. Anyway, here's another very powerful tool. Let's say you're browsing the internet one day and something catches your eye, but you don't really know what it is and you wanna learn more about it. If you hold your finger down on either the home button or the line at the bottom of the screen here, you can now circle to search anything that's on screen. 
So the screen will light up like this. You can draw around the area you want to search. It will then search what you've highlighted and give you a bunch of results. And there we go. It's actually even found the exact image on my website that that has come from. You'll see there's options to buy it and all that kind of stuff. So circle to search is very, very useful. Let's see if it recognizes Boba Fett in the background here. <laughs> it did. And it actually even found the wallpaper online as well. So circle to search is a very powerful AI tool and I do recommend you make the most of it. Now here's a really, really cool one. Within the Samsung Gallery app, if you open up a photo, here's one I took earlier, looking particularly miserable. <laughs> I'm recovering from a pretty bad cold at the moment. That's my excuse for looking like shit. Anyway, if you tap on the photo at the bottom, you'll see the sparkly stars. This is the sort of AI icon that's being used everywhere now. So if you tap that, you get a few options. And the first time you use it, it will actually show you what it can do. And you tap this here that says Portrait Studio, you can turn this image into a comic style image, a 3D cartoon image, a watercolor painting, or even a sketch. So let's go with 3D cartoon, Pixar style. And there we go, we have a Pixar version of me. And you can save a copy of these to your device and even use them as wallpapers if you wanted to. Okay, here's another really fun AI tool. If you hit the AI stars at the bottom of the image again, this time hit sketch to image. Now we can actually draw something on this image and it doesn't even need to be a great drawing for this to work. It does need to be kind of recognizable though. So I'm just gonna draw something real quick. That is my very bad attempt at drawing a cat. And there we go, it's actually added a cat in the background of the image and it looks surprisingly real sometimes, but you get the idea, you can create anything with AI within an image. Okay, so here's another little photo AI trick and it's a great tool to use if you want to adjust an image that you've already taken, but also great for removing photo bombers from an image. So if you go to one of your photos, I've just taken a photo here on the desk, for example. If you hit the sparkly AI stars again, and let's say we want to resize Ryu here within the image. So we can just draw around. Now, if you hold your finger on that, you can actually expand or minimize the size of the character so we can make him much bigger in the frame. And the bits behind where he was before will be filled in using AI. Now let's say we wanted to get rid of that character entirely. It's a similar process. So you just tap the sparkly stars, you draw around the person you want to delete from the image. This time, if you hold your finger down for a few seconds, the eraser icon will pop up just above. So if you tap on that and hit generate, this will assess the overall image and fill in the gaps to blend it in nicely. And this often works really, really well. So that's after the erase and that's before. So I've been going on about the Recorder app all the way through this video and for a good reason. So if we swipe out the Edge panel and open the Recorder app, straight away, the first time you use it, it's gonna show you what it can now do. You can actually record lectures or meetings or even YouTube videos if you wanted to and transcribe them into words and then summarize them into bullet points. This is an incredibly useful tool and I'll show you how this works. And it used to be limited to 10 minute recordings. Now it can actually go for a couple of hours and transcribe and bullet point everything. So I recorded a couple of minutes of one of my videos within the recorder app. I'm just gonna hit stop and save it. Now, as soon as you saved it, if you jump into the recording itself, you can transcribe immediately into text. It shouldn't take too long since it's only two minutes. If it's a couple of hours, of course, this is gonna take way, way longer. Straight away, you've got a nice clear transcription of everything. And if you hit the little icon up here, you can translate it into another language. And check this out, if you hit summary, hit okay. This then uses AI to summarize everything that was said in that text. And you can even jump to keywords within the text. This is a very, very useful tool and I highly recommend you utilize it. Okay, here's another very, very powerful Galaxy AI tool. And this is in regards to writing things. So I'm just gonna open up a blank email. So within a text field, if you're using the Samsung Galaxy keyboard, you will see the AI stars here on the left side. If you tap that, you've got a few options, Composer, will literally write something for you. So let's say you need a sick note for work. 
and you'll notice just below you can change the format in which it's for so it can be an email it can be social media or a comment on a post on a video for example like this one please leave a comment and then you can choose the style as well so you've got casual and polite so i'm going to go casual and hit generate this harnesses the power of ai so that you can get a day off work now check this out here's another way you can use the ai writing tools let's say you've written a bit of text yourself and you want to improve it or change the style if you highlight that text and then hit the ai stars again you can go to writing styles and you'll have a bunch of different options to choose from this is something i use for social media posts quite a bit because it adds all of the emojis and the hashtags in automatically it's just so easy so if you do prefer to use chrome on your phone as your go-to browser what i recommend you do is add the samsung internet app to either one of the edge panels or one of your other home screens and the reason i say that is because of this very very powerful tool within the samsung browser app so let's say there's a really useful article that you found online and you want to grab the core information from it if you hit the ai stars at the bottom of that web page you then get the option to summarize that page into bullet points so just hit summarize there it reads the entire page for you and then you have these really nice concise bullet points and you can actually expand on these a bit as well so if you hit the little button here just next to the cross and go to detailed it will just add a bit more information to those bullet points this is a great tool for researching pretty much anything online okay here's another ai tool remember the edge panels swipe those out at the top here you'll see this little pen icon this is a tool that allows you to draw anything from scratch and then use AI to generate it. So this kind of works like that sketch to image, except there's no image this time. So let's say I draw, I don't know, a sunflower or some kind of flower. <laughs> Actually, this is probably going to turn into a windmill. So let's turn it into a windmill. Now, once you've drawn your image, you can use the little drop down menu here to choose what kind of style you want it to be. Let's go illustration and hit generate. I'm interested to see whether this is a sunflower or a windmill. <laughs> and this is just a good example of how bad your drawing skills can be and how good they can end up looking. <laughs> and there we go, you get a few different options. And it has turned out to be a flower, which is what it was originally supposed to be. <laughs> so that's good. The other tool that exists here on the edge panel is this one, which is the smart select tool. So you can draw around anything that's on screen, similar to the circle to search feature. But this actually allows you to download what you selected to your gallery. You can also share it from here or copy information from this selection, for example, the text. So if you hit the text tool here, it highlights all of the text that's within that window. And then you can add that to a note or just copy it to a clipboard. So it's a very, very powerful tool for extracting information or saving screenshots, but not the entire screen, just part of the screen. So it's a fantastic tool. Definitely use the Smart Select. So thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I do have a hidden gem to show you guys before you go. And you might have noticed I didn't really go into the camera features on this phone. If you want a dedicated camera video, let me know in the comments. But now let me show you that last tip that you should definitely switch on on day one because it will help you in the future. Within your settings menu, you will see device care. And then within device care, if you scroll down again, you'll see this option, auto optimization. This will be switched off by default. If you set it to restart when needed if your phone starts running too hot and it's being overworked it will reboot to refresh the phone and you can actually set it to restart on schedule if you want the restart will not happen while you're using the phone so you won't be watching a video or something and it suddenly switches off it will typically happen at night and this is just a great way to make sure your phone is running at its optimal at all times and remember the widgets we set up at the beginning of the video this one here with the memory and the storage if you hit the little brush here that actually clears all of the ram being used in the background and this is another way to speed up your device if it feels like it's running a little bit slow and if you want to learn more about customization and truly getting the most out of your galaxy phone then join me once again and together we can rule the galaxy and you can do that 
by hitting this thumbnail on screen right now. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next one. Don't be late.